Southern California is famous for beautiful beaches, uh, great ocean experiences, uh, wonderful surfing, and also natural hazards. Everybody has certainly heard about the earthquake hazard in Southern California. But Southern California also has a tsunami hazard. There are a number of fault systems, both uh, close to the coast and offshore in Southern California. And there are also large fault systems throughout the Pacific Basin. And so if you're in Southern California, you might be at risk of what we call a near source or a local tsunami, or you might be affected by a really big event happening far uh, elsewhere in the Pacific Basin. There are generally two types of tsunamis we're worried about, uh, transoceanic tsunamis. These are tsunamis uh, that come from these massive faults around the uh, ring of fire around the Pacific. These involve uh, large magnitude earthquakes uh, with a lot of vertical motion of the sea floor and can generate these uh, waves that travel all the way across the Pacific Ocean. These events would create uh, an official warning issued by the National Weather Service uh, if those events could have an impact to our local beaches. This could be in the form of a uh, tsunami warning, or a tsunami advisory, or a tsunami watch, depending on the level of severity of the event and the impact that is anticipated by that event. These types of events give us anywhere from five to seven hours of response time before there is an impact from that tsunami and it gives us a lot of time to take specific action in our area that would be appropriate to protect the public's health and safety. This may include evacuating our low-lying and coastal areas. Here in Dana Point, it may include the harbor and our local beaches. A local tsunami could be caused by either an underwater landslide or a significant earthquake that would be strong enough to potentially knock you off your feet on the beach. If there is a local tsunami or a local big wave coming in, there's going to be no warning from the Alaska Tsunami Warning Center and people at the beach will need to know how to respond. Either the water will either be going out or again if the, if the earthquake is strong enough to knock them off, off their feet, then they need to head inland or to higher ground as quickly as possible. We also can uh, say a tsunami is like a flash flood or like being downstream of a dam failure. If you're in the way of it, the survivability is very low. Uh, the mortality rate is gonna be very, very high. So the number one best thing we can do is get people out of the way ahead of time. The evacuation is, and the warning are clearly the two most important parts of this whole process. If you feel an earthquake while you're on the beach, you need to get off. Uh, if you feel an earthquake while uh, you're on the shores of a coastal river, you need to get off. And you need to stay off because you have no idea if uh, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the eighth surge is going to be the largest. It could well be a period of danger that lasts 8, 10, 12 hours or more. If you're a visitor to the coastal communities and you experience an earthquake, which you may have never experienced before, or if they come in with a tsunami warning, what do you do? Well, the first thing you can do is look in the phone book. They have emergency instructions there as well as phone numbers. You should know your evacuation routes. If you're in a hotel, they will all have evacuation routes posted. Know where your exits are at. If it's a tsunami and you can't get out of the building due to an earthquake, move to a higher floor. If you can get out safely, move to higher ground, which is 100 feet elevation or maybe a mile inland. There will be evacuation routes established. The community uh, members will know which way to go, follow them. They will take you in the right direction. Do not go to the beach. You've had this warning several times. If you see the tide recede and you see the water going out to sea, don't think it's a great idea to go look at that. Because following that, once it reaches a certain point, there's gonna be wave coming back at you and you will not be able to get away. You cannot run fast enough to get out of the way of that wave. It will take you with it. It could be catastrophic if we had a tsunami on a beach day because on a typical beach day in the summer we can have up to 150,000 people on the beach. So after the earthquake in the Indian Ocean we decided as a city that we needed to follow the National Weather Service program Tsunami Ready. And as part of the Tsunami Ready program we improved our warning systems, 
Um, we have additional systems to receive tsunami warnings, and we have several systems like our, our sirens at our fire stations where we can notify people that there's an emergency. We have a mass a notification phone the system that can call people the and tell them there's an emergency. And what we want people to do is when they do hear there is a tsunami warning, we want them to take action. Don't hesitate. If you're ever in doubt and you don't know what to do in a tsunami, just go inland. Get in your car and drive inland if time permits. If it's a local tsunami and you're on the beach and there's not a lot of time, then you need to just walk across Pacific Coast Highway and start moving inland as quickly as you can. In addition to putting together a kit and a family plan, we want people to remember to practice their plan regularly and to reevaluate their kit at least every six months. Um, you might have changes in your needs, in your family, uh, maybe there's been an addition to your family or there's been a new uh, illness where you would require additional medication, which is why it's so important that people remember that they have to keep their plan up to date and their disaster kit has to also be current. We work hard to help people become prepared for a disaster or any type of emergency, but ultimately everyone's responsible for taking care of their well-being and the well-being of their family. We are constantly encouraging personal responsibility when it comes to disaster preparedness.